What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Den Uncensored. My name is Eddie Lopez, and I'm going to be the host of this debauchery today. Today, we have us a great guest coming in the studio. We have us another first timer, one of my good friends, past patrons when I was DJing the club. It will be my friend, Nancy Lang, coming up. What's going on, Miss Nancy? How are you today? My God, Eddie, it is so good to see you. It is it's good been to see you. Forever, it seems. It has been forever. Oh, and before actually, before we get started, let okay. me announce that the liquor that we're actually drinking, or at least I'm Whether actually you're drinking, drinking today. Yeah. I am on the maker's mark today. I'm going for a threesome. A menage a you, trois. You're going for the you're going for the threesome. We're starting <laughs> already, guys. We're going for the menage a trois. That's what he offered me. I'm sorry. I'm I just... offer you the menage a trois right before, exactly. before the show started. <laughs> and Duke was the third party. Yeah, he I'm was like, doing the licking right before yeah. you got in the door. He was he was sniffing and licking in the right spots, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was trying. He was yeah. trying. He was trying. Can't blame a dog. Yeah. So how you been? It's it, like you said, it has been a very long time since we got to catch up it and stuff. It really has. I we I don't think I've been to the hookah like in five years. Shit, six I haven't. Years? I, I haven't been I'm to the hookah saying. in a while. I mean, and I, I hear it's like Club Kathleen now. Um, <laughs> like I said, I, I it's been a while. Um, I do see Solomon and Saeed. Oh, Actually, yeah. I saw I saw them. I was with them uh, with Solomon last night. So I see them. I mean, I'm always loft. at the loft. So yeah. that's that's my spot. That's it's. I'm gonna sit my cigars and, and whiskeys there. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, it's been a while since I've been up there. And I, I do need to get with them though because I feel like my my hookah. I haven't had a, a good hookah in a long time, especially with my, my hookah thing busted. I'm like, oh. I was addicted to that. I had to like really stop because I was going to the hookah, what, three, four days a week? Yeah, you were there. You, I were, mean, you I was, were one of our regulars. That's I for helped sure. them build the loft, you know? <laughs> I think you it's invested, hilarious. You invested, invested some money for them. I invested in the yeah? future. Fuck yeah. And it's like, <laughs> and I had the hookah in the house. And so it was like, I really yeah. felt like a crackhead because I'm there with the burner and the coals <laughs> and the stuff. And, yeah, I, you know, I, rem just... I, I remember going to your house after yeah. some of the nights, yeah. you know, the after parties or yes, whatever, yes, yes, and yes. had and had the hookah there. And yeah. that's when I started learning how to do it at home because I, I was like, damn, we could actually do this at home. And yeah. then I realized exactly what you had to you, you gotta know, go through. Uh, it's a fucking chore. Yeah, it, it's it was. A job. Uh, you gotta have the little mini burner, yeah, that, so I that said, way you I can burn like the coal. Crackhead. I was like, <laughs> okay, get this going. DJ, um, Didi was the Didi, one, of yep, course. Didi yep. and uh, Is that? Shu, uh, Shushu, right? Yep, yep. They showed me uh, how to do it and hooked me up, and it was like. Um, it was, somebody said to me, why do you always have to have that in your mouth? It's like, what the fuck? It's like sucking a dick all the time. And I'm like, well, okay, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. As long as you're putting that in, you know, no, you know. It's um, a flavorful dick. There you go. It's, I only did peach. I never liked that fucking triple apple or double apple. Oh, uh, I always, I always did the, uh, the house mix, which I think was a mixture. That of, was the like, double apple. It, it, it was a, yeah, I don't, I don't know that. I know all I know is it was a mixture of things, but. That's basically what I always got. Yeah. Damn, now you're making me want to go, go and get a hookah now. I know, I'm, right? I'm I, like, I haven't done a hookah. So I'm doing vape. You know, that's what I was doing. With, yeah. I was doing the, uh, they have like hookah flavored I vapes say, I mean, too. It, vaping at your age, is that is is that smart, ma'am? <laughs> at my age. You know why people are always so fucking happy to see me? Hey, you know, you're because still, you're still, I'm still alive. It, so. Yeah, exactly. I'm still alive. I've lived through... Um, prohibition? No, not prohibition. <laughs> but, 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 let's be real. The yep. AIDS epidemic, hot tubs, pool parties, free sex and love, no condoms. Sounds like the 70s, right? Yeah. It, 60s that and was, 70s parties. That was how I was, that was how, you know, life was. You didn't even ask their name. You didn't care. It was just all about having a good time and... No protection or nothing. No, just raw dog all the raw, time. Raw yeah. dog. Yeah, yeah, no. I I never liked a condom. I don't like the feel. I don't like the smell. I certainly don't Nobody's like the taste. Like... I'm not going to suck a dick with a condom on, and I don't know what that's even about unless People you're People are sucking dicks with condoms? Oh. Yeah, they got flavored condoms. Oh, that's just retarded. Like, what's Thank the point you. of that? What is the point? Like... Is there any sensation to that? I'm. Uh, uh, most guys I'm, don't complain, but I guess if you're I mean, they're getting hooker, their dicks sucked. I mean, they're not going to complain about that. I, exactly, with a condom on or without a condom on. See, I, I never, I never was a, a con I can never do the condom. It's, it, 
<laughs> well, see, that's the thing, though. But now you have to be so fucking careful. Yeah, this because is Because you got so many guys on the DL who are dipping in <laughs> a lot of different things and will not tell a female, you know, oh, just so you know, like I fucked some guy in the ass the other night, you know. They're not going to cut because, oh, I don't want you to think I'm a homo, but, you know, that ass was really tight and good. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, and, and he asked me to, and when your face is down, your ass is up, we don't even know if it's a man or a uh, woman. So let me tell you, the, when I had, when we had Josh here and he was explaining how, how so many people uh -huh. are actually on the down low yes. that he actually... He's like, I get more straight guys than I do gay guys. I'm like, how is this possible? You know, oh. he said, hey, trust me, dude. And he goes, I know you're not in this world, but mm -hmm. you'd be amazed at all. You wouldn't be amazed. It's your regular fucking nine to five guys with the white shirt and tie um, that do the Wall Street, that do big business or whatever. That's how they, <laughs> no pun intended, get off. Wow. Okay. They can fuck any woman they want, but fucking a man is really what they want or to get fucked by a man. You can't tell me. So does that make them gay or bisexual? No, it makes them just a sexually Active, oriented yeah. person. Um, and this new world is totally different. I have always said from the beginning of time, if you watch any mafia movie, you watch any mob movie, okay? okay. I guarantee you part of that introduction of when they burn that match in your fucking hand is that your ass is lined up for all of them to run a fucking train. Lord because Jesus. if you tell, guess what? <laughs> your ass okay? is grass. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, and nobody, nobody, you know, your wife won't believe it. She'd be like, oh, no, you know, my, not my husband, you know, yeah. dudes have been to jail. Women, come on, girls. Yeah, they once, all... once, you, once you get into that prison, you're okay, going to turn care. some ass, her heads, right? It, listen, I don't care who the fuck you are, okay? Yeah. Male, they're going to take it from you, okay? Pop bottom fucking line, bottom line. I know nurses that work in prisons. Yeah. I know them that work in just fucking jails. Shit happens Shit all the time. Happens. They end up. <laughs> Literally. In, in the infirmary <laughs> yes end up okay so um anyway i don't know how we got off on that no it's, topic, it, yeah. it's 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 basically how my show is we start okay, a topic yeah, and then you start talking you about know, something you it, randomly it, go yeah, so it's, it's all like, good it, sorry it cue me back no it's, it's like okay it's all good take a sip here Drink it all you want. You got that whole bottle because that bottle <laughs> no one else will drink because what? I, I don't know the rules on the wine. So uh, yeah, they go back within a couple open, of days. Yeah. yeah, usually. So you might as well go ahead and kill that bottle while you're here. But if you have a vacuum sealer. I don't, um, but I don't, I don't really have people that come drink okay, wines well, here. So I you know might as well kill that fucking I'm, bottle. Oh, I'm girl. Please, dude. Not girl. Sorry. <laughs> I so, find I say that a lot, even when I'm talking to men. Well, I, that's I say, you, like, you, girl. You definitely do a lot and hang out with the, the LGBTQ community. I, I see yes. your I see your post a lot where you're out and about, so you're yep. very active. So, of course, you'd be like queen and you know, yes or I've, yes or whatever that is. They call it back in the day, I um, was, quote unquote, a fag hag. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, and that's, now, that's, you know, that's kind of I mean, of can, like, you, can you say every, that anymore? Well, I'm just saying, everyone's got a fucking sensitive ass yep. these days. Yep. You can't say anything um, without repercussions of, oh, that hurt my feelings. We got oh, some sensitive ass kids my these mother's days. a whore, and I didn't like when you made fun of her, and, you know, this kind of thing. But um, I also do some stand-up comedy. Oh, and, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My comedy is all X-rated, triple X. I talk best, about my the, vagina. The best type of comedy. Though. Yeah, it's like, and so I'm laughing at my vagina. So if y'all get insulted about my vagina, I'm sorry. Then you need to fucking leave. Now, how, let me ask yeah. you this. How old are you now? 66. Okay. I will be 67 in November. So we're talking about a, a senior Ooh. citizen yep. pussy. Okay. Yep, yep. Nice. Oh, and you know what's really sad? It does look like Arby's after a while. Wow. I have to say, I have to like just say, and my advice to young girls. Where's the beef? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. My advice to young girls is this. Instead of doing all them selfies of your face, take a selfie of your pussy while it's still pink. Or some Kegels. Yeah. Well, even the Kegels, it's not going to help the color. Okay? Oh, okay, it's the color. The pink fades out and it starts to look a little bit like um, veal cutlets when you're simmering them in the pan. Oh, it's, uh, 
up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just got this this fucking visual right yes. now. Yes. <laughs> okay, get the visual. Like when you're cooking it in the butter and it starts so to what, cur- what makes, curl what makes curl the color up a go away? Bit. I mean, wh- I don't know if it's, it's like no lack blood of flow circulation. Or? The thin the the skin is thinner. It's more fragile. You know. I mean, I don't know, but dude, it it, it doesn't get prettier. Wow. You know? Okay. So, like, a female's vagina is in her prime, like in her forties. You know, I mean, like, okay. I would say after forty. Well, maybe that, that's not. That's like 40. the cougar age frame. You know, they usually well, go for the younger guys too. The yeah, little well, yeah, because the stallions. They, listen, they like to fuck. They like to just do whatever they want to do, and that's fine. But what happens is, and I think this is where females, um realize they're selling themselves short, you know, because if that's all you're putting out there, then that's all you're going to get back. If yeah. you're using your vagina as a passport, you know, which I call passport pussy, it gets you wherever you fucking want to go. I mean, okay? pussy makes the world go around, right? It does. Yep. But don't complain then if, you know, you've used it and now you want to back up on that or, you know, you get offended because somebody says, you know, your shit is worn out, I you mean, know? I mean, they got those surgeries now, right? So these, gir- these girls are going back to their, their their teenage years trying to make their shit look young again. And But whose idea was that? That's a male concept. They got females out here looking like fucking aliens because <laughs> they got no body hair. They're getting everything oh, well, waxed, know. shit. Like no, I, 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 I like I like I like the shaving pussy. I, okay, I'm not gonna, so, I, I, or trimmed up really good, like really uh, short. I mean, okay, so because you know, there's a very fine line between a pedophile. <laughs> well, we ain't no pedophile. And so. a man who likes a a, a clean, <laughs> like a clean woman. Yeah. Okay. For me, I don't, I don't want to be going down there and having to come out with a fucking you know toothpick that I needed. Back in the day, baby, floss my the teeth. Seventies. Okay. Yeah. See, like, I think I'd have a hard time. To, you had to go through the bush, man, in order to get there. Yeah, see, see, the way I visualize it is, I'm thinking, man, if you're going through this, there is a lot of freaking potential sweat, especially if it was through the day. Like you're uh-huh. going, it's like. You know, this well, is why even guys, this is why now the guys like to stay yeah. shaved. You know, Well, because it makes their dick look bigger, too. It's I mean, not because I mean, they I mean, want to really be clean. It just when they look down, it's not. Somebody told by, them a wrong story. Like, Damn, yeah, it's bigger. Well, yeah, because there's no hair there. It's the true story. Okay. It is. It's like and especially when you look down, you're just seeing like all this slug here with no hair. You know, it's like the snake is out of the garden kind of a thing. You know, it's like. <laughs> You know, I mean, if, and I get it, it's, you know, um, fads, things. I don't know. It it might be more than a fad. This thing's been around for, you know, getting cleaned up has been around for a very long time now, though. Uh, Yeah, but like maybe it only really is big the last 15 years. Okay. I mean. You know, I mean, when you say long time, okay. Well, I just saw a meme the other day that Mm -hmm. said in eight years, the Mm -hmm. 80s or 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I started thinking about that. I said. Holy fuck. Mm-hmm. Oh, In yeah. eight years, the 80s were 50 years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Life life is going to go by really, really quick. As you get older, yeah. um, people need to really pay more attention to your experiences rather than chasing the dollar or, um, you know, being superficial because you're always going to, in my opinion, you're always going to be chasing something that's not there. Right. It's like that first high again. You know, it's like, oh, man, I remember when. So instead of tripping back to what you remember, stay present and yeah. enjoy every moment that you're in. And that goes for sex, especially. Right. You know, don't um, go in there with a preconceived notion. Just enjoy it. Right, Duke? You're so so it. let me ask you, uh, yeah. let me back up. I noticed here recently that you are actually taking yourself out on daily walks. What was the motivation for you to, is, is this a challenge, one of these new challenges or <laughs> something that so you get, get Nancy walking or, know, I mean, it, or it's just health wise like, all of a sudden? It, it's not all of a sudden. And I've always been, you know, I have obesity that runs in my family. Okay. And I'm a junk food liker. Okay. I used to be well, a lover. Well, like junk food? Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's like, give me a fucking checker. That's why I go to the gym so yeah. I can eat shit. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's like, I like my checkers at two o'clock in the morning. Oh, no, I can't do that one. Yeah. Oh my God. If I eat so past good. eight o'clock, 
fuck. All right, I start stressing out. I don't know. So you got to remember, I work nights. Uh, that's just, I so mean, yeah, I get it. I That's my that, that's time. Your, that's I your lifestyle. Two o'clock yeah. in the morning, I can have a big like steak dinner. And I didn't realize some of the places are still open. Now. I thought a lot of them closed by midnight. Oh, well, I can make it, bring it with me. I heat oh, it up I got you. at work, I got you. you know, I got you. that kind of a thing. But yeah. I figured I saw you walking. I was like, oh, Nancy's walking now. What's going on? Yeah. Well, just it's, you know, it's uh, a little bit of an accountability. And what's so funny is that people will text me, did you walk today? And I'm like, fuck, man. Now I got to like, you, you got to post it up. I, you I started it. So you got to keep there. it going. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah. my God. Like, okay. So I didn't walk today. Fuck you. Stop shaming me. Or, <laughs> Or, um, you know, yeah, I'm out there walking. And then I just decided, like, I'm just going to park the car by the lake and stand there and say, yeah, here I am. Day six. And then get back in my fucking car and go. You know? it. Yeah. Well, it's funny is because you think that you, when you post something up, that's so funny about social media is you post something up and thinking nobody's really going to watch this. Who's really paying Fuck attention? They do. But let me tell you, and you just somehow people will start hitting you up if they don't see that. Like, hey, I thought you were doing this. Like, bitch, no, you didn't like my stuff. So, but obviously you're watching it. So. Like you're nosy as fuck. And They're you're like, all well, up why in isn't she shit? doing this? Yeah. So it, yeah. It, trust me, I get that completely. I have people that do that. Like, and then what always cracks me up is like, it'll have like something like, you know, 60 views, but only five likes. Yeah. Yeah. So you Pe looked at it, but you couldn't fucking like it. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's up with that? I don't get that. You got a power button there. Yeah, fucking no, it's let they, your they people ain't trying, know. They ain't trying to let you know that they're actually. There you, know, you go. Watching your stuff. Yeah. Haters. Haters <laughs> going to fucking hate. Absolutely. Yeah. So right. you're you're still in the, in the, uh, the healthcare industry and yes, stuff, right? Yes, sir. I and am. You, well, from what I knew, you were always in the hospice the uh, end of life. sector. Yes. yes. So. With that being said, I mean, I know there has have been, had to have been some horrible or crazy stories you oh. have seen because that's not a job for the the week. Right. It, no. I mean, when you're dealing with knowing that somebody's life is coming at the mm -hmm. end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, what are some of the uh, what are some of the most heart wrenching or terrible stories that that kind of got you that mm. like, damn, why am I in this job? That would have been my first child that died in my arms. and In hospice? Yes. Oh, geez. And see, that's what blew my mind because I never thought hospice was for young people. I always envisioned, you know, always people, people that yeah. in the 80s or whatever, they got old and they went off to the hospice house and they died. Um, and it was like my first month working in the hospice house in Temple Terrace, the Malesh hospice house. Um, and there was this little girl, she was six years old, oh, Jesus beautiful Christ. Hispanic family. When I tell you, um, the husband, the wife, and they had two other children. And I walked into the room and she looked like, um, Belle from Beauty and the Beast. They had, yeah. she was just laying there in this pretty little gown and she had long hair and her little fingernails were polished. And I'm looking around the room and I'm just scoping it all in. And I felt this like tightness in my chest. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Nancy, what did you sign up for? And I had to like, just in nanoseconds, you know, process everything. And right. I could see the child was actively dying. Uh -huh. And um, I said to the mom and the dad, and they looked at me and they want to know, but they don't want to know. Yeah. But they're counting on you to be honest with them. And I told them, um, why don't you come and lay down here with her? And I put either one of the, I put the husband and the wife on either side of their child. Yeah. And I held her, you know, so we were kind of like all of us were in the bed. And I just busted out crying. I mean, I mean, it, it, that's, that's yeah. got to fuck with you emotionally just oh, to just to know it's and the parents were thanking me. They were that's kind of like what blew my mind. They were thanking me and telling me that I made it so beautiful for them. And right. that, thank you. And we kept asking everybody how much longer and you were honest with us. And, you know, so you realize the importance of your role. Yeah as an educator and as a nurse, and you're not just taking care of the patient, you're taking care of the whole family. Right. So um, it's an enormous task, but it's also an honor to be given, to be put in that position. I didn't willingly put myself in that position. Yeah. I um, applied for the job because I thought it would be a good job. Right. Not realizing- How it would change your life. Yes. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Now, good God, that's a yeah, um, that's a story right there. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. On the flip side, uh huh. Now, when some of these patients, like let's say some of your older patients yeah. that are coming in and right. they know that they're um they're about to check out, mm-hmm. do do you ever get any requests like oh, some of these guys like titty. death row? Like, listen, yeah. I know, I know this is it. Can I can I can I see some titties? <laughs> yeah. Let's, oh, I, I have. This, I have, you know, I've brought them their like little bottle of, you know, the whatever their favorite drink was. Yeah. They're like, man, I would just love to have a, a last shot of Jack. And I'm like, if you're here tomorrow and you want that, I'll bring it. Right. And they wait for me. <laughs> They're like, you, did you know, you bring it is, that? and it's so, funny you say that they wait because. Yeah, they do. When, when my ex-wife's mom was in hospice uh, and i, I want to say we were in lake wales mm-hmm. um she was holding on um for the you know just holding on mm-hmm. but when we all got there like the, the daughter showed up and the grandkids were there mm-hmm. um i think she was in a happy spot yes. and i think she at that point she was able to let go and let me tell you that was that was my first time ever ever happen to see a situation like that. Like somebody just currently was just breathing and all of a sudden is now gone. Like it was a surreal moment. It's like, yes, I can't believe I just fucking saw this. This is, yes. this is nuts. But it, it just seems like she waited because, you know, they knew it was, ha- it was coming, but they just didn't know when. But as soon as everybody was able, actually mm-hmm. able to get to the room, they, mm-hmm. uh, then she just kind of moved on. There is um, a lot of truth to that. Okay. Um, patients, hold on. Nobody willingly, and I have to say this, nobody willingly goes into hospice looking forward to death. Okay. And the other sad thing is that most of these people come to us. Okay. And no one has mentioned the D word. Right. They've been to Moffitt Cancer Center. They've been everywhere. They've had a million things that they do not say death. They just, the D word is like the F word. Don't fucking say it. You know, because we're going to just stay in denial. Sure. Because that's how you get people to move from one place to the next. They stay in denial. Okay. Okay. So when they come to us, because the hospital has said, okay, so we've done all we can now. And, you know, we've used up all your insurance. Okay. But, of course, they don't say that. Um, And we're going to send you to hospice and they will make you comfortable. That's the word. They is that use. the key word? Is that yes. is that what it is? is yes. When you're out of insurance funds. Well, and- when you're out of insurance, as well as there's nothing more that's going to change the situation. Right. So, um, me personally, like, look, you're fu- you're fucking done. You're yeah, not, you're I, not, we're not getting I, paid, so yeah, you're done. I and you know what? Let me just tell you, if those people didn't have insurance, they wouldn't even get the honor of going. To, it's you know, it's it's amazing how much we depend on insurance companies they rule the to, world, to Eddie, control. Insurance companies rule the world. You know, they decide who lives, who dies, what procedure gets paid for. You work in insurance. I work yeah. as much. And I, yeah, I, I, I've been there a long time on the yeah. auto industry side. I've but just Geico I, for IT over 25 side. fucking years, Geico. Yeah. And, and it's I. I always say we should have insur- insurance should be an optional thing. It shouldn't be a mandatory thing. Well, be- um, but but it, with that being said, that if you decide to not have insurance, then you got to realize that it's, you're it, you're covering your own stuff. At Listen, this point. you're going to get medical help. Whether you have insurance or you don't have insurance, okay. Now the uh, exclusivity of the medical care that you get. Um, will, you want me to stop? No, no, you're okay. Will depend like, so here's a situation. You could have the best insurance. Okay. And the hospital will milk your insurance fucking dry. Sure. If you get 180 days of benefits, trust me, you ain't going to see that out of light a day for nine months. Right. Okay. Um, does that benefit you? No, because the longer you stay in a hospital, the sicker you become, the more infections you develop, the more shit they're going to find. OK, yeah, sure. that's if, why I hate going to the doctor. Every time if, I go to a doctor, yep, somehow listen, I end up with another surgery. I was going to say, and they <laughs> give you another medication. OK, so here's the thing. You don't go to a surgeon for an opinion. Okay, because their opinion is going to be what they do by business, which is surgery, which is yep. cut you. Yep. Okay, so that's what they're going to do. 
Okay. You go to a general practitioner, you're complaining, whatever, they're going to give you a pill. Okay. Um, and they're just going to, so the pharmaceutical industry, okay, we can go on a whole nother wheel here. The pharmaceutical mm-hmm. industry and the insurance industry, and th- let's throw in the automakers, okay, because they run the world. Yeah. Because that's what's dependent upon fuel and energy and money and the big one percenters sit back and be like, yeah. Insurance company. I'm not gonna lie. Insurance companies are hurting right now. I mean, especially they with, need to with, be with, fucking with hurting because we've all paid all this money on the fear that they've instilled in us. That's what the government instills in us: fear. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. it's the fear of what if, what if, yeah. what? I could fucking die tomorrow. All that money I paid into insurance for all these years, I'm getting dick back. Okay, yeah. so it only benefits if I die. So if I'm dead, who's gonna use it? Fuck no. I must spend every dime now. Just saying. <laughs> I, I, what, what, what kills me is sometimes like this past surgery that I had. Mm-hmm. I had, um, I actually still got some bills like five months later after the surgery. I'm like, wait a minute, I thought this was already taken care of. How am I still getting billed? Like, no kidding. I, like the consumer Anesthesia. doesn't know. No, that's the, that was the one anesthesia. Yep. Anesthesia Anest- came in for like a ten thousand dollar bill. I was and gonna I, say. I was like another, and I was like, wait a minute, but I still apparently owe like almost a thousand. I was like, wait a minute, I thought I paid, took care of this, but somehow bills are still rolling in. Yeah. How is this possible? Because people don't check it, okay. And if you start checking shit, okay, and questioning shit, you'd be surprised. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lopez, that was a mistake. Mm. You're right, that already was, right. okay. Because what you just need to do, what people don't do, is you got to call your insurance company and be like, yeah, hey, nobody what is calls, nobody, and nobody wants to talk exactly. to the insurance company. Like, ah, they they're supposed to take care of this for me. They Honey. don't, okay. I they actually don't. had I actually had a girl uh, when I was going through my my physical therapy. Uh-huh. Um, when I and I went for. It's going three times. Your dog is macking me. I just want you to know. <laughs> he went like this. He slicked his ears back and he gave me that, hey, girl. Look. He's a flirt. I see that. No, yes. Look, he don't got him hyped up. Uh, no, he knows. He knows. He knows I'm a sucker for a pit bull. Yeah, baby. But um, but yeah, so back when Go the girl when the girl, when the girl was doing the benefits therapy. or whatever, I she gave me a price and I was like, you know, it seems kind of low. But I said, are you positive? This is my copay. She's like, yeah, this is, I called them up, verify, whatever. So I'm like, okay, I'm trusting you it to wasn't. be the, the pro. I get this bill in like for an additional like 1200 bucks, or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the fuck? So I called, I like, hey, I thought I was told this. Oh, well, I mean, I literally called the actual company, not the receptionist. And then mm-hmm. she had the nerve to fucking tell me. It's the patient's responsibility to, to, to look at your, know your benefits. I'm like, who the fuck Buyer beware. knows their benefits? Like exactly. I, I sign up at work. I'm like, okay, cover me for this. I'm not really going to go. I, I said, I, yep. the, the bitch had the nerve to tell me well, it's the patient's responsibility to look. I was like, okay, so it's also your receptionist job to be giving me accurate information. Correct. But she did not. So right. let's because she let's split this bill. For the insurance let's split company. this bill. So she wants to get paid. Yeah. yeah. People don't realize that they're being fucked over all the fucking time yeah. because they don't want to they don't want to know. Yeah. They really don't. So tell me about this uh tell me about this comedy gig that you're doing. I, I mean, where are you doing comedy at? Okay, at the Pink Piano. Um Okay, which is I've down heard in of that. And I actually um Mm-hmm. I got invited to it the other day because uh, Dan Singer was out there playing yes. somewhere. Yes. So I haven't been to it, and I thought it was the spot that was behind the old uh, Two Ten Club at one point. But what's it, no? It's next to what is but that? I guess that's a um, bistro back there now. Because I thought what was it was some kind of. It used to be a bar as well. It was always a bar. It was somebody else's bar though. Um, I'm trying to remember, but. Next to it is Slammers. Okay. And then on the other side of it is Union Hall. Uh, I know exactly where you're at. Right in there. Okay. Okay. So now my original comedy started out years ago when we knew each other at... um, Tony Studio B. I invited you to come and see me. That's what was there. That was that was no. That's that was downtown Lakeland on Bay Street. Tony Tony Studio B. That's where I used to hang between there and the hookah. That's but where, I think th- I think that's the spot that I'm thinking of. Though. No, you're thinking of Socialite, which was no, no, on. What was behind that? Because 
whatever road was behind, because uh-huh. there was an alleyway behind them, and then right. there was another str- that street. Could have been. I, that's, I think that's Could've the spot been. that I'm talking And I think it's a restaurant now or something. Um, no, uh, it's next to uh, Bay Street Bistro, which is okay, next that's the bistro to place. it. Okay. Right. And then I think like some shishi baker or something went in there, and, you know, then they added some other stationery, you know, for the white entitled people that like to buy that shit, you know. Sure. And, uh, but those fancy apartments that went up there, so yeah, or condo or whatever break. those are, so eighteen hundred a month for nine hundred square feet, and there's a wait list to even see it. Wow! Like that's what blows my mind. Wow. How Lakeland has just become too big for its britches. Everyone's getting, we're getting bougie. Yeah. Listen, it's the Tampa people. It's the people who work in Tampa or Orlando commute that- this way. Come this way because it's less rent than Tampa and Orlando. Yeah. So it's still jacking up the prices. And we got to, you know, I don't want to sound like an old person bitching about the prices of things. But you are but an old person. Fuck, yes, I know. And see, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, and here's a funny thing. I don't hang out with anybody my age or older. Everyone that I hang out with is in their 40s, 30s. I even got 20s. You know, there's people who call me mama. You know, I'm like everybody's mama, you know, whatever. My house has always been their Who speaks their mind? Yeah, it's because I'm going to tell you right now, like, listen, don't suck that dick. Stop (laughs) it, you know? That's a dirty dick in this town. Yeah, exactly. It's like, stop it. Don't do that. If you want to be seen a certain way, there's certain things you just shouldn't fucking do. Yeah. Yeah. To everybody you meet. Is right. there nothing special anymore, Eddie? I got to ask you that question. Yeah. But we talked about well, my comedy. So the yeah. comedy is about me yep. and aging okay. and gravity. Okay. It's a motherfucker. Gravity okay. meaning. Yeah. I have like- to put on um, a bra okay. before I zip my pants because otherwise I might catch a nipple. Okay. okay, I'm talking gravity like that. Gravity is a motherfucker. So, when you so lay all down, the memes that you see the titties yeah, by the knees is it's a true thing. It's, you know, mine don't go that long. They do go long, um, but it's like crazy. And when you lay in the bed, bing, they they're disappear. like under your arms, like they just go off your chest. And and like my dog, like sometimes like steps on one. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and like I gotta, you know, pull it up and push his paw off. I'm like, like dude, a, like an old man balls when you have to sit on your own balls. Dude, and stuff. let me tell you, I take care of old people. They sit down on the toilet, their balls hit the fucking water. It's like, oh, you pooped already? He's like, no, that's my balls. I'm like, oh, <laughs> dude, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know? I it, mean, this, it's the truth. So maybe, maybe there needs to be discounts for old folks to get some of these, you know, lifts and stuff. And you know, would you have Botox done to your balls? Hell no. Okay, well, men are doing it. Okay. Men are doing it. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a thing. Oh, Oh, it's a fucking thing. Women are having these BBLs, booty butt lift, okay? Brazilian butt lift? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Booty butt lift, whatever. Where they're snatched in the waist, okay? And then they got this big ass booty, and then they got the titties. They go through this major reconstructive surgery. Why? For a man, but really not for a man because women compete with women. Women are haters on each other. That's right. Yes, because men are fucking dogs. Okay. They're going to puppy, look. Okay. You're not a puppy. You're a fucking <laughs> full grown ass fucking dog man. Okay. And um, dogs are easier than men. I can tell you right now because my dogs <laughs> will do anything for peanut butter. Whoa. Most so- men. They're like, is that all you got, bitch? <laughs> Come on now. Can't you throw me a steak or something? They want you to cook. The old adage, they want you to be a freak in the sheets, yeah. a lady in the streets. Yeah, you know, absolutely. don't tell anybody I eat your ass, please, because yeah, my buddies will like rag on me. That's a, that's. I, let me tell you, we've had multiple conversations on pre- uh, lots of these podcast episodes where this whole ass thing, I, I, I can't see myself ever getting into this but really yeah this is this, you've never eaten ass hell no this is not something that i think i'd ever want to even consider i, I oh. get it i get it it's like a new fat or have something have you ever had your ass eaten no it's just oh. I, I don't think it's something that i can even uh dude but get. you could fuck an ass no uh, oh i i, I okay i've, I've okay. done i've done the anal sex with 
females a few times. You have done it to them, but you've never had it done to you. Hell no. Have you had your prostate massaged? By a doctor when I had to go for a prostate check one time. Not by a female? No, this is not, again, this booty hole is okay, dude, zip tight. So <laughs> it's, just, it's not going So in. <laughs> here's the thing. Let me just say right now, okay, that an orgasm on that level and you and see in what level in the in the uh, prostate like, like in your it's just prostate, like we're talking about road trip like, where they go a couple like, fingers in like no just like a quarter a quarter of your digit the first digit okay mm -mm. in it's still too much in and down and that's where the prostate is okay and when i tell you wait just the quarter of the finger that's the why the why when when you go to the doctor for the check they stick because the whole he's fucking, a homo fing, and he the whole fucking finger up there react. i'm like well because, motherfucker that yeah, what are you doing yeah no and especially if he's got big hands he's just being an ass okay no pun intended mm. but motherfucker they, they do it for reaction just like females who go to the gynecologist like fuck they spread you apart they put in these metal things they you know it's like it's not it's so intrusive yeah. and it makes you feel so uncomfortable. And just if it makes you feel any better, the female doctors, they check your ass, too. They have a finger in your pussy and in your ass at the same Maybe time. Double penetration. Yeah. Feeling the wall in between. So it's kind of like, what the fuck? And if should I come? I'm saying, do like, I, are I don't you going to get like, off at that point? Like, Would it feel weird? I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty well, sure it happens. That's part of my comedy. I'm like, you know what? I paid my $30 copay. Fuck it. I'm coming, you know? So, wow. Um, <laughs> Maybe I need to come and check out this comedy yeah, show. How, I'm just saying. How many days a week are you doing this? Oh, it's not days a week. Okay. It's like once every few months. Oh, okay. Um, I do it. But next time I will send you an invite. Yeah, let me Absolutely. know. I'll, I'll definitely, because, you yeah. know, I'm a, I'll, I love me some stand up. Like, oh. I, I like I this this year alone has been so far is is planned to be a great year for me going to stand up because I've already checked out Sebastian uh, Maniscalco. Okay. Um, I have tickets coming up for Joe Coy. I got okay. I got tickets coming up for Tom Segura. Okay. And then I'm going to go see Taylor Tomlinson as well. So it's it's been I uh, if, it, if I could have got the Burt Kreischer tickets this year too, this year would have been probably the. I mean, it's already going to be the best year to me going to check out stand up comedy. But so, what is it? Which type of a comedian do you prefer? Like, because there's all different styles of comedy, you know. Like, I I like, I almost like the 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 comedies that's very relatable to me. Mm -hmm. Like, especially with Joe Coy. Joe Coy's comedy, I relate to a lot of his shit. Like anytime you tell the story, I'm like, uh, huh? K O I J O K O. It's K O I, right? No, K O K O Y, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. But uh, anytime he tells a story or and his jokes and his punchlines, I'm like, that was my house. Like this relates so much because to me. that was his house. Yes, and it's like, I just love to do. Like I, I actually will go back and try to find all his old stuff just to go watch and I'll, I'll watch him over and over again. And same thing with, you know, Burt Kreischer. Burt Kreischer just got this stupid funny comedy. Like his his life comic jokes is just, you know, him and his kids and stuff. Uh -huh. I fucking love it. Like oh, I that's, just, the, I, that's I, the redneck guy? No, no, no. That's the one that he does all his comedy shirtless and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Big guy, sure, but he, you know, him, him, and Tom Segura right now are currently like the kings right now. They're they're just killing it right now. You need to go back and look up some old school, okay, um, comedians because they were like before everybody got a soft ass. No, I mean, and I know? do watch. You know, obviously, I love watching also Gabriel Iglesias. I've I watched yes. him. I he's was the fluffy guy. He's right? the fluffy guy. Yeah, yep. and I was a big. George Lopez fan. Okay, absolutely. And I got to watch. I got to watch George. I was excited to watch him, but because as much as I watched him on TV, uh -huh. it seemed like I knew everything that he was getting ready to say. Right. So I was like, he was predictable. Oh man, I was so. I felt like I was disappointed, disappointed going yes. to the show because I knew exactly what was coming. I was like, fuck. Because he just had that routine. He didn't do anything yeah, and I, and I, But like I said, it, I, I mad respects to George Lopez because like I said, he's one of my favorites. But it just seemed like when I went to his stand-up, the one that I went to was like, fuck. You knew exactly what he was yeah, going to say because it was off his sitcom. Yes, because that's what yes. pays his bill. Yep. So his realness is not realness anymore. It got commercialized. Exactly. Look back into someone like Sam Kinison. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Oh, my God. He was like, and of course, um, Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy. Yep. You know, you got your Chris Rock and you got your Kevin Hart. But um, the the most funny comedy is taken from all of our dysfunctional childhood. Fuck, yeah. The most relatable stuff is the, the funniest shit. Just, I actually got to see Kevin Hart when he was in Tampa, uh, when he actually did the small improv. Like, I actually have photos like when he was in the best. small. Was that, like, not the best? It was great. Um but then he blew up. Of course right? he so did. like, well, he's not doing that again. So the next time I caught him was in Emily Arena. I was like, right. well, this is a lot fucking different than going to the improv. Yes, but absolutely. It was more of a, a, a very quaint, you know, little spot for him to do his gig and work on his material. And then now he's now fucking he selling is. out arenas now and stadiums. Like, well, that's but that's it. awesome. That's like awesome to see. You know, he, he's, he's put his hustle in. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. But he's uh, now he's competing with The Rock, which I think is hilarious. Oh, yeah, okay, I mean, I knew The Rock <laughs> from wrestling days, you know, with yeah. Brutus Beefcake and, you know, like all that shit back then. So yes, have you ever I'm had sorry. any run-ins with celebrities? Any any secret uh, um, secret affairs? Oh, with a celebrity? With a celebrity? Oh, they were a celebrity in their own mind. Oh, um, their own I'm the celebrity stuff. because, you know, <laughs> I'm me. But um, all kidding aside, I've, you know, I've... Um, I have I've fucked a few people that are um, that were okay. that aren't anymore because you know we're fucking old, um, <laughs> but um, I never took that into any kind of an account. Yeah. You know, back in my so you didn't day, go like with the groupie tours where the you know, the concerts were going on, try to jump on the tour bus and no 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 flash no, some titties no. to get on no, the bus. No fuck no. Oh my god, I just buy a like a $300, $400, $500 ticket if I want to be that up close to them. But I'm also a realistic, I'm a Bon Jovi freak, okay? Okay. I love me some John Bon. Bon Jovi does some good shit. You know, the the reality is I'm 66. Everyone else is 19 and 22. So no, my tits don't look like theirs. (laughs) No, it's not a good look for somebody my age to be a fall down drunk groupie um, running after somebody. No, it's, you know, now I'm more concerned about um, self-preservation. Sure. Okay. But I think that all comes with age and that wisdom shit and, so you back know. in your prime, though, did you actually do like the a lot of the sex parties? So I know we oh, briefly we briefly yeah. touched a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there was a club in New York City. Um, everybody knows of Studio Fifty Four because sure. you're there, from New York, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So there was another place called Plato's Retreat. Okay. Okay. Not to be confused with Plato's Closet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That sells remixed yeah, clothes. Yeah. Yep. But Plato's Retreat. Like your dog is like really into me. I'm just saying. I know, Duke. I know. If I had my phone right here right now, I would capture the picture. He's got the ear slicked back. He's giving me the smolder. The smolder. Yeah, he's giving me the smolder. Don't turn my dog on now. No, he's, he's already turned he's, on. He's actually just being so quiet you know. right now. So. Yeah, well, because he's macking me. He's eyeing me. Okay. <laughs> he's got his two paws like this. He's putting his head down. He knows. You, you, I got don't, you later. Don't, don't make the red rocket come out. Okay. Yeah, it will. Um, and if I had peanut butter on me right now, he'd be like, whatever. <laughs> so um, there was a club, Plato's Retreat, and it was a sex club. It was okay. a swingers club. Men could not get in there individually. They had to come in there with a female. Okay. Okay. So, because they wanted to, quote unquote, not have homosexual activity. Okay. But it was bisexual. Oh, I figured it would have been more for, you know, we got to have an equal ratio. No, bisexual was totally okay. Okay. You could come in a woman with two men. You could come in a man with two women. Okay. But you couldn't come in two men. Two women could come in, but not two men. Okay. Okay. But once you got in past, you know, and there was a pool, there was no alcohol, they had no liquor license, but drugs were laid out like a fucking charcuterie board. (laughs) Okay. You had cocaine, you had pills, you had weed, you had hash, you had any fucking thing you could imagine. Right. Okay. People were snorting it off of naked females out at the pool. Okay. Um, But then you could pay for a private room in the back. Okay, so there was like little lockers and that you would go in with the one man who would go in with the other woman and they would hook up. So that's why I said I was kind of like the fag hag. I took all the people around who wanted to be around. You know, I was their beard, so to say. So when you were in those times, did you ever have any uh, 
female encounter? Did you hook oh, up with females and stuff? Um, the best was, and see, you know, most people went naked. I, oh, you yeah. know, clothing was, was optional. I wore a bodysuit. Okay. I was like, you know, use your imagination a little bit. You had, you had the stigma because I remember going to your house, you were very big with Jessica Rabbit. Didn't oh, you say yeah. you did like a whole Jessica oh, Rabbit thing at one I point? I have The my tattoo. Whole, yeah. Okay. I, I, I kind of remember yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the whole. Jessica Rabbit was the epitome of women. That's why this new snatch thing, it's not new. Okay. Look at Ice T's wife, Coco. I mean, this shit isn't new. So we're reinventing the wheel. Always. Always, yep. um, even though there's nothing wrong with the wheel. Yep. Okay. Everything that's old becomes new. And if you look at it, we're living the Jetsons lifestyle. You know, we're just waiting for the helicopter to turn into the briefcase. So would you ever consider yourself on the bisexual side? Because you've tried oh, things? Or... absolutely. I've had loving relationships with women. Yep. Um, I was totally in love with a woman when I was married to my husband. My, I've been married three times. Okay. Um, my second husband, um, but it was in the 80s, okay? Sure. And he was a cop. And he was like, you can keep playing with her. That's fine. Did you allow him to play with her, though? Oh, he didn't. You know, he wanted to, but see, that wasn't my, that wasn't a thing. You know, it was yeah. like emotionally, he was shut down. He was a passive aggressive. He was a cop, you know? So, like, he never gave me emotionally what I needed, but also, um, you know, it was just a whole different thing. Like, so most guys will tell you, oh, they're so cool with you being a bisexual. Oh, my God, that's so cool. Because they're waiting to be tapped in like the man on the bench. Yeah. Oh, put me in, coach. Put, put me, me in. in. Let me tag that Fuck ass you. No, quick. this is not what this is. I'm not here for your entertainment. So you never did the threesomes ever? Or? Oh, I've had threesomes. Oh, okay. But yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, my last husband, we were in a swingers group. Okay. Um, And it's really funny because... You know, looking back, I was never drug or alcohol free making those choices. So uh, okay. coming full circle now, yeah. my advice to anybody who wants to do the swinger route yeah. or let's bring somebody in to like spice it up. I've, I've, I've always wanted to dabble in the or at least once the. Mm -hmm. The, the female, female, male. I, I think that's any well, you guy. you said. Didn't you say I've, you had like I, I, uh, two I've, females? I've done the male, male, female before. Oh, okay. I've, but okay. I've never done. You want to be the only man. I want to oh, try the, the female, yeah, female, should. male thing. At least once in my life, right? I mean, once oh. in my life before, before I get too old and can't do shit, right? So, well, and but. If, yeah, before your dick sags and your balls get real <laughs> droopy and you got, and you're going to always keep shaving now because the gray hairs really, they fucking throw you. Hmm. No, sometimes I, some of the women like the gray hairs, right? I mean, you know, on, like on, at the, least at least with the facial beard. Yeah, now that I got the grays coming in slowly, like, oh, I like that. Listen, you know, it's a matter of you can carry it. I can carry it. Not everybody can carry it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just can't picture myself with gray hair because why? Yeah. Well, you're rocking the blue hair yeah, now. When you walked in, it's like, when the hell did you do the blue hair? Don't I, you and remember you when I shaved my head? When I used to have like the real tight cuts? I was a level two. Yeah. So you're you all over the place with yeah. your styles. And I'm seeing all the tattoos right yeah. now. It seems like you've gotten more ink since oh, I last seen absolutely. you. I mean, oh my it's God, like you're almost yes. a, a canvas artist here i am i'm running out of real estate that i would like to have anything tattooed on <laughs> my last tattoo was um we spoke about hospice work um my sugar skull okay um which i love because you come to learn a lot in hospice about death and dying and sure. their rituals and i always was afraid of the sugar skull of the um day of the dead and this kind of like it yeah. kind of creeped me out but that was before i understood it sure so now that I understand it, so every tattoo has a symbolism for me. That's what I was getting ready to ask. Yeah. Is there a theme? Because, you know, some people just get tattoos and just, oh, that's a cool one to yeah. throw it on. Like yeah. just, like me, I have all of mine. Like I started out with a tribal one or first started out but with my name. But weren't you in the Marines? And I was at Air Force. Air Force. And okay, when I was sorry. in the Alamo, I got my first tattoo, which is my name because my dad had his name on his arm. So I went and did the same thing, mm -hmm. but I did the old E, but I kept it like a tribal style. Mm -hmm. And then I got my next one. So then I was like, you know what? If I'm not going to just have random tattoos as, right. as much like I love tattoos. So I kept on with the theme. Like obviously everything I have is at least some kind of a tribal ish type okay. deal. Okay. Cause I don't want to have all those mixed matches. I at least want it to be uniformity. I got to have the aesthetics, right? Um, so you got to have it pre, 
presenting like it's all together. Yeah, yeah. Because like, especially like my next one, like I'm already ready and itching to get. I've been work on getting the uh, this the arm sleeve done, but I got to figure out. I got to talk to my artist. Who's your artist? I use um, Isaac. What else? Have you ever had a female tattoo artist? No. Okay, you need to. And um, her name is Sarah Sunshine, and she's with Beyond the Veil okay. down by Outback Steakhouse. Okay. Okay. Um, it's a whole different vibe. With a female tattoo artist? Yes, and mm. she's amazing. I'll, uh, I mean, I'm always into, into ch- checking on new check, people because, check but like out. I said, I, I already promised Isaac he can have this arm. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I just want to kind of figure out what we can do. Like, I want something different, but I don't want to have, you know, like right now I have all this going on right. here, this, but I don't want the same old stuff, but I kind of want to keep it within the same theme. Why? So Why? I, I, I got to figure out, like, I do want, um, cause I love tigers and I love eagles. That's what I have on this arm here. So I want to somehow have a tiger cause I'm a Leo. So, right. or a lion, just right. have somehow some way, shape or form. I'll let them do the work cause they're the pros. So. Uh, mm. But I, I definitely uh, I like to have you know a theme. But that's all I was asking. So like I said, I, I see a lot of new ones that I absolutely. Um, when um, so this arm, um, I had done all henna style. You can still see like the brown ink in there. I had done this arm. This arm was completely henna style. Okay. Okay, and this arm was colorful. The mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this arm was colorful. And um, your dog's sitting on my foot. Yes, I know, baby. I know. It's it's a rough So have you? do you so, have any tattoos in the nether regions that... Oh, no, no, so no, you no. Never, like, you, you, would, just, you would never go that far with the tattoos? Listen, listen, listen. I, I, the, I, the farthest I went is this one here. The inner thigh? Um, the inner thigh, and it goes right up to the puss. Um, and that's good. Like, I don't understand people that pierce it, that tattoo it, that do all these fucking things to it. I like, dated, I did date a girl um, in the military. I took her to the actual <laughs> tattoo part to get hers done. Pierced, her labia? Pierced and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And I never got to experience it. I was so fucking pissed. Like, what happened? We you... ended up splitting up, like, right after she, because she had to wait after a while. You couldn't have sex after so many, right? like, and a she week was like, or two, fuck three. This shit. So we ended up splitting up. I was like, motherfucker, I don't took you to that place. And I paid for that shit. I, well, I didn't pay for it. She oh, paid okay. for it. But well, I, then... I did get to watch it. But yeah. I was like, I didn't even get to play with it. What did it, what, like, so, like, you playing, like, so have you done that since? No, have you, I have never yet, had I a have, female that had a, no, a, that was a, ta- the, the one, a pierced. Yeah, that was the only labia. one. Like, that was it. I'm like, God damn it. I had an experience in one time and I never got to play with it. I have I pierced saw it, nipples, but I never got to play with it. But, um, yeah, pierced nipples is like as far as, yeah. and my belly, you know, but I don't understand. First of all, like, why? I, it, I, I so think I guess a, that's a, a sens- sexual it's a sensitivity thing. Yeah, definitely a sensitive thing. thing. Okay. Um, I'm sensitive enough. Like, I don't need um, that extra shit yeah. in my junk because, like, no, I'm fucking catch lightning or some shit. <laughs> like, like so, no. <laughs> so, so without that, then, so... And you're not you're not involved with anybody right now, right? No, I have been. Um, I am not in any relationship now for almost fifteen years. Not to say that I haven't had sex in the I thought past. You were you were years. with some guy. For, oh. I was. I was. Okay. With, yeah, I was All with right, a I guy. I, yeah, I was doing like the dating website and yep. that kind of shit. But those things run its course, yep. you know. Because here's my problem, Eddie. They want a nurse and a purse. At my age. Okay. Like, mama, I use my sugar mama. When yeah, are you kicking no. it, though? Fuck you. Okay? Because here's the thing. I just got to fix my skirt. I don't know why it got twisted. Okay. Um. Oh, so, yeah, the nurse and the purse thing. So yep. here's this fucking thing. Okay? So I'm on dating websites. I yep. was. I'm no longer because, like, the, the whole thing just, like, literally creeps me out. Because yep. you'd be better off just going to a random bar. Or sitting in the fucking Amtrak station to meet somebody. Amtrak station? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. I'm serious. 
because at least you're seeing the person. You don't know what's behind these people online. Okay. You know, and uh, hello, I'm not stupid enough to send my money to somebody who lost their passport. And at least, you, at least you're saying you're, you're not stupid enough. There are a lot of oh people my, you believe I can't or not get that over it. will click links and I'm like, come on, Dude, don't be that stupid. I, they are because they're that desperate because they have no self worth without somebody else blowing smoke up yeah. their skirt. Yep. Okay, so uh, with that said. I met quite a few people and, you know, it's like, okay, let's take it out for a ride and see if it works, you know, kind of thing. See if it works. (laughs) Yeah, you know, because it's like... I get it. I understand. And everybody that I've been with, they're younger than me. It's like they're 35, they're 40. It's like, you know, that's just my age limit. It's like, I'm not going to go like 50, a 50 year old man is the oldest I want as a man. And I'm a 66 year old female. Okay. So the 50 year old male, he can still catch them younger girls. Okay. Right. 40s and 30s. Because some of them younger girls are trying to get that uh, financial Sugar stability. Daddy. Yep. Exactly. I don't need it. I want you to come to my table with what I have. Yep. Okay. You got to have a full time job. You can't be laying on your mother's couch in the basement. Your <laughs> vehicle of transportation can't be a skateboard. What? The new generation? Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, you have to like be free of communicable diseases. You, you don't, know. You don't want no TikTok influencer? Uh, no, for what? See, they want me for what I can do for them. Yeah. Okay. And I get it. I get it. It's a give and take society. Yeah. Okay. But I have a Hitachi magic wand. I was getting ready to say, so with that being said, yeah. um, obviously then oh. you've got to have a lot of toys. At some point. I, I don't need a lot. Let me just tell you, hit that clip and I am so good. So y'all okay. hear that, ladies and gentlemen, old women still play with toys. Oh, fuck. Yo, I have a variety of them. I have a drawer so full no- of them. It, do, it doesn't stay dry? You got to... No, my... Still got. See, women, I feel bad for them, okay? They're saying the shit is all dry and whatever. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry. If you, like, what are you washing it with? <laughs> I'm not dry. You know, it's like I even have to, like, as you get older... That's why I said, like, what's on this chair here? Because, like, women who don't wear panties, I don't know what you do with the drippage. And you yeah. have no hair there anymore. Hair catches... You know, there's a reason for hair in every orifice, your nose, your face, your eyelashes, your asshole, your pussy. Hair is there to catch things. Just just the thought of just. Isn't that so disgusting? (laughs) Yeah. Well, otherwise, where does it go? I mean, it on, runs on your clothes, down your get, leg or in your yeah, clothes. Yeah. Like, I mean, sex feet. sex is not the most, you know, the the cleanest oh, environment. So I mean, fuck no. And that's the thing. It depends. Like, okay, so w- where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Because you want to fuck me in the ass. You want me to suck your dick. You want to have it in my pussy. Like, hold up. Do you have three different dicks? A lot because of work, right? There's a yeah, you got to pick a hole. Yeah, it, like really, can we like lay the ground rule out right now? <laughs> because I'm not doing that, and then you want me to say no, because then you're gonna have to go sit in the tub, twenty minutes at least. You're gonna have to yeah. wash it, scrub it, skim back your dick, clean the cheese, you know. So yeah. All right, so check this out. Yeah. Ironically, normally my podcast is usually run about an hour, hour and 15, oh, whatever. I talked you over. No, 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 we're good. Yeah. We're actually at the hour mark, right? But I do want to get, because every first time mm. I guess, or I try to do is my- uh, The hot seat. The hot seat questions. Fucking give it to me. So uh, at, least you, at least you know. I mean, we run through a few of them, so that way we can get yeah. some answers and see what we got I here. fucking think that's hilarious. It's almost like name that tune. So- Okay. All right. If you were broke and desperate, would you become a prostitute? Like out on the street, walking around? Yeah, prost- oh, or no. a prostitute. Oh, or- no. No, I would have to be in my home, of course. I used well, I mean, to- you're going to find somebody on the uh, street and then okay, maybe bring listen, it to your house. So. Back in my day, if I didn't have cash and I needed an oil change, it would be like, listen, I need my oil change. Can I suck your dick? And he's like, okay, that's fine. You, you, know. you suck dick for the oil change? I did already. Oh, you I did? Would. Oh, yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, a set of brakes. Uh, okay. We, I ain't okay. sucking no dick for no oil change. Like, well, I'll we, pay you the, the oil change fee. Well, you see, that's a guy, you know. But back in the day when I was a single mom, I was like 20 years old. I had a one-year-old. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's be real. You know, nurses then didn't make a lot of money, but I was very good at sucking dick. So just so you know. <laughs> You know, I feel like if you're going to do something and I'm not a spitter, 
Um, so hey, yeah, no, you're a winner then. Absolutely, well, a, lot of, a lot of these women, some of them, kinda, yeah, they just take one lick like it's like, a snow this cone. Is, this is not for me. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. All right. So we'll keep. Go a, we'll we'll go to the next. <laughs> we'll keep them out here. Have you ever been cock blocked by a friend? Oh, um, you know, I never knew what that really was. Cock block? T- yeah. Okay. Um, but then Amanda did that to me a couple of times because, like, that interfered with her relationship with me. Okay. Like, she who, couldn't come- Who would she have cock blocked you from? Anybody oh. that would have prevented her from coming to crashing at my house because I never realized that's what... She was my friend because it was convenient for her. Oh, okay. okay. So and we fell out because I called her out on it. I was like, okay, so wait a minute now, you know? Um, okay. So, yeah. So you've been cock blocked. Oh, before. fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've had people cock block me. Like, you got guys who, like, will, like, pretend that they want something and then down to the situation, and they're like, all of a sudden they get, like, this emergency phone call. <laughs> and it's like, no, bitch, I got you. Okay, yeah, I got you. I see what this is. Yep, yep. Yeah, you got uncomfortable. Okay. I mean, I think we, at some point we've all been cock blocked at some point or another. Or yeah. you could have been the cock blocker. Like, no, nah, bitch, if I ain't getting this bitch, you ain't getting this bitch. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, what? Yep. No, that money she's going to spend on you? Fuck you. No, it's going to be on me. Yep. So that nobody gets anything. Okay, exactly. Been there, done that. Yeah. Okay. So have you had, have you ever had sex on a toilet seat? Oh, God, no. Like, what is that? I see this thing like you know he's I mean? pooping you, and you're sucking his dick. Like, or, what or, is I that? mean, you might, you might be in a club and you want to, oh, I no, mean, you go no. into the bathroom I mean, I've, stall. Okay, so like in an make... airplane, yeah, I've been the Mile High Club. Oh, I've congratulations. In an That's one the... thing I've never done or attempted yeah, was a Mile High that Club. That was, um, that was pretty cool. You know, I mean, I never knew it was a thing, but it was like, there was a time when I was just run on my hormones. Like my, yeah. My pussy was the first thing that said hello to you. <laughs> it was like, you know, welcome to Pisonia. What uh, what airline were you? Oh, I think it might have been TWA. Oh, that's, um, a, that's definitely old school right that there. That was like a long time wow. ago. That was when you could smoke on the airplane. You wow. Know? Yeah. That, that was so, a long fucking yeah. time ago. Yeah. You could smoke. Wow. On, and it was so funny because the, the, the smoking section was separated by a curtain. By the curtain. It's, it's like, it was, <laughs> like it was in the restaurants and stuff. Yeah. You could, this is the smoking section. Is hilarious. It was definitely like the movies. Like you open up the curtain, it was like a Cheech yeah. and Chong movie behind there. You know what? Though that's funny is because when I actually was when I was a smoker back in the day, I that was to me. It was like, oh, this is very convenient. You go to yes. the bar, smoke your cigarette, yes. and yes. But now, and now, then it was I, taken away from us. Yeah, we got angry. A lot of us were angry, but uh, but I had stopped. What I stopped smoking in 2012 when I went to Oktoberfest in Munich. Okay, and. uh and after that, when everything started cleaning up and cleansing, like right, the system was like, right, now it's like, right. uh, it's, it's kind of nice to not have the smoke in the, in, you in don't, the restaurants. You don't know what you don't know. Right. And I'm like, okay, so this is actually uh, uh, not too bad now. Like it took me a little bit, but once I stopped smoking, I was oh. like, I get it. I get it. When back in the day, you would go to your doctor's office. He had a cigarette and an ashtray there, yeah. and he would offer you if you wanted one. Well, he's writing out your fucking prescription. Well, I didn't have that part, but yeah, no, yeah. the Marlboro Man was real. I mean, <laughs> the doctor with the cigarette, the doctor with the pipe. I mean, they could smoke in the hospitals with oxygen yep. all around the fucking place. Think about it. It's just <laughs> it was- amazing how time has changed, huh? Oh my god, yeah. It's like, hey, I have a cigarette. Oh my god crazy it's true all right so have you ever used a sex toy on someone other than yourself oh absolutely um but only with females okay you know um we're talking like little bunnies we're talking no, about dildos. Like, like a dildo that looked like a french lo- a loaf of french bread Okay, that's, that's how big, big it was. Fu- was it one of those yes, double ended dildos? Double ended. So you put it in you, I put it in me, and then you scoot, scoot, scoot. Okay. Wow. Um, I, I've seen it one time. Yeah. I, I think I've actually talked that, about it before. I've actually seen it one time wow. in, I want to say it was in Texas where I. Or maybe and it was in Albuquerque. They fuck horses in Texas. But it was, it, it, was, it was either New Mexico or Texas where I got to <laughs> go to the show. They donkeys there. Yeah, it okay. was, uh, yeah. It, it was no. the craziest shit that I ever saw. Like, wait a minute. Because it disappeared. It disappeared. Yes. This long fucking thing. Like, yes. where did that shit go? That, that's, it, it's that's like, These two little tiny girls, yep. that long ass fucking yep. six foot slong just disappeared. Yep, yep, like, yep. I'm, I got to assume, this is what I, I'm assuming it fucking 
compress as the girls. I don't know what it did, but it was wonderful. It, <laughs> it was, was like wonderful. the feeling that we had. And then like you got this dick in you and you're rubbing clits together. It's yeah. like, holy shit. Like this is heaven. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. You know, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like I said, it, it was one of those things where I was like, wait a minute, where the fuck did that thing go? It's like, I get it. It's just, these small girls only have so much room in well, there. So Every female only has like two inches. Okay. So the what vagina. Do mean, wait, 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 what do you mean two inches? In your pathway. Okay. You know, so what happens when they take the cervix. Well, so when they take okay. a 10 inch long. Was well, that? don't forget, we open up for childbirth. Okay. Everything comes from behind that. So... You know, it can be opened. It can be. There are some females like. See, I, I heard it only takes an inch and a half for a woman to actually truly get satisfied. Well, I'll, because I'll that's where the stimulation really is. In so the, clit the, the little micro penis guys are there, good to go. Well, for the most part. <laughs> yeah, you know, I had well, I mean, one of them too. Right? I had one of them too. And the micro penis guy? Yeah, the, li oh, the little okay. dick is good for anal sex what? because it's just like a tampon. That's all it is. <laughs> you know, I could take a tampon in my ass. That's fine. It's not any bigger than my finger. So that's cool. You know, so that's what little dick guys are good for. If they don't have so a good head game. Then, yeah. then they do that, oh, yeah. No, have a good head game. <laughs> yeah, a lot of guys don't have a good head game either. It's almost annoying. It's like, okay, listen, you obviously don't know what you're doing, so... See, at least I got my, my, my platinum star you, in that situation. You, you got so. your platinum star there? <laughs> so you, you get the man in the boat, yeah, you, you know you what know, you're I, doing I, there? I, I take care of it pretty well. That it was my so one, do, one of my claim to fame, right? <laughs> oh, oral sex. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you put a finger in while you're eating? I do every now okay, and then. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's what gives you your platinum star. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you most gotta, guys You got to know how to play with yeah, it. You know, exactly. You got you you to take your time, so. Okay, so it's just like your ass, Eddie. <laughs> Give somebody a chance no, to take their no, time. No, I, I can't. That, okay, um, it will come to you. Mm, no pun intended, yeah, but it will. It will. <laughs> it will. It will, because one day you'll be in a situation that maybe, and this conversation might come to you, because you know what? Know Sometimes I've washed my ass a little too much. I'm like, oh, okay, wait, it's clean. Stop. You know? <laughs> like, I don't want to... Oh, you I don't want to your own ass? Yeah, I don't want to keep that, like, on a thing that, like, we need to eat and drink water every day. Yeah. Okay? Like, I don't want to be like, okay, I can't start the day unless I'm fingering my ass. Okay. Because the orgasm is that good. You know, it's like, fuck, I, I don't on, have I time for that. I keep on hearing that, that, that the orgasm it is, is It really is. I can tell you immensely. as a female that um, has only engaged in anal sex with my husband. Right. Okay? Um, baby, we was popping champagne afterwards. Wow. Um, because it was like beyond, okay, so you know, beyond your greatest fear is, is greatness. So beyond the pain is pleasure. Or death. Okay. So you got to think about it. So when you put yourself into situations now, right? Always think about it. Am I willing to see? I started, I, I just die. Am I willing to like what? What is so you become a little less reckless? I mean, I got gotcha. you. Uh, it's still it's, it's still in that mentality like uh, I don't know man and I, and I think I just had that old school mentality mm -hmm. still very like I used mm. to how old are you 42 42 42, 42. yep you're a baby boy and you're really in your prime. Don't let anybody tell you that you're 20. I try to tell prime. people that's like, I'm in my prime. You baby. are. Like, no, you bitch, are. your prime ended back in this way. No, no I, I'm still, no, I'm no, still no. my prime, baby. Now, you're <laughs> better than prime. Okay. You are platinum because you've I try got. I to tell these ladies I'm prime beef. <laughs> okay. It, well, prime pork, maybe. I don't know about some beef there. We got to get the well, oh, part man. dog, but I don't eat dog. <laughs> you know, we could go on about that. But seriously, a man in his 40s should not be married. Okay. okay. Interesting. I really, and I also have another like thing, like in between breakups with people, yeah. spend a year on your own. You need sure. to take time to figure out why that failed. If you care why it failed, if you don't care, then just keep humping. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. But eventually see that's the fucking motherfucker that's where i am now but it, it gets to a point though i mean even if you start kind of taking the time for yourself mm -hmm. at some point 
when you start not having that sex after get that fucking sleeve thing man do it for yourself have they got this great fuck have you seen it's called I, a fleshlight a, f- a fleshlight flesh light i'll have to and uh, it is this rubber oh Am- is it like the machine that's supposed to like a suction thing amber type rose deal? has it on her do you follow amber rose on no, ig i don't no. okay fucking amber rose is hilarious okay. follow her on ig um, she was my inspiration when I shaved my head. I mean, there's something really sexy about that hoe. Okay. Um, and I flesh love like it's a flesh like. Listen, we supposed, know pe- it was supposed to stimulate so, the whole. No, what stimulate your whole dick goes in it, and inside it is like like it feels like a woman. Okay, it's flesh. Yes, I'm to look, look that it shit up. up, dude. I'm sorry, you don't know what. And it's wet, and it's you slap. Well, the reason dick. why is because I, typically I always have a female with me, right? Okay, I, well, I, I, I'm, listen, I'm never that's the thing. not you long without okay, a female, right? Listen, and that's a problem. Oh, I mean, okay, that's a problem. I'm just saying because a female will limit the amount of stimulation you get because your concentration is on stimulating her you yeah. want to win her over sure. and you'll take like me and not so okay orgasm because it was good for her i mean it's, i mean you there are times there, there, there are times you find that one female who does yeah. Okay. does yeah and that's why you guys keep going through winning women looking for that one first one again the one who did that the one who flipped your fucking lid flip yeah. your own lid dude call your own name while you're having sex with your fleshlight call my own name yeah oh eddie <laughs> you're the best oh <laughs> eddie oh fuck me eddie <laughs> fuck me eddie yes yeah i don't know if i can be calling my own name that'd be weird you but can just may, lock may, the dog out of your room because like he's looking he's like oh man what am i into tonight oh. but seriously and when females you know, a guy goes whose pussy is this it's your pussy daddy no fuck you it's my pussy i'll have to well uh, i'll have to yes. check it out I'll, fuck me eddie light. fuck I'll, me I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at it yeah. i mean being on the single side again right now so it might it might oh. be a good minute before uh and you're gonna have a hard a woman is gonna have a hard time after you have that because i'm telling you it's going to blow your fucking mind away. Oh, uh, now you got me intrigued. I'll, yeah. See, pretty soon I'm going to actually have the plan. Things to the, buy? The plan, no, the plan <laughs> of this podcast room is I'm actually going to have the TV set up over here. So that way, when things like this come up, I can actually have it pulled up on the screen so I can actually see it. Yeah, it's like point so, to. Okay, so I see your whole set turning into something like ridiculousness. Okay. <laughs> okay, with getting two people on the panel and you and you showing pictures. Sure, yeah. Okay, like, oh my God, like how fucking hilarious. I mean, it's, it's. I mean, a lot of the podcasts do like like with Joe Rogan. And stuff, they all have like Thompson Girl. They all have their TV set. Yeah, all, yeah. They usually off screen, but that's yeah. definitely what I mean. I got the room for it, but it, that's the next project is yes. to actually have the TV. Oh so that God. way I can and have like, them. And can up. let's just show you right here what we have. Yeah. Now yes. I'm, I'm really interested in looking at what this uh, flashlight is. Yes. So. It's and yeah, go on Amber Rose's website on IG. Uh, her account, but you can also just Google flashlight. Use DuckDuckGo. So. You don't get all these dick men like yeah, okay. after you put it out there. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we're going to go done. ahead and wrap things Good. up, Miss Nancy <laughs> Lang. Do you want to actually give out any uh, socials if anybody that's listening actually wants to follow you and maybe come check you out their local, check you out when you're actually doing your comedy? Oh, yeah. Well, people um, can find me on Facebook. I'm Nancy Lang, L A N G. There's, um, I hang at the Pink Piano. I do comedy every now and then over there. Absolutely. Um, they know me. People who know me know me. Yeah. Like, and like I said, you're a very outgoing person. So, I mean, <laughs> around Lakeland. There, yeah. And some, I remember there's been times we've had to kind of tone you down. I, I do remember those days. Oh, like Nancy, a couple Nancy, of days. Nancy, yeah, Nancy, Nancy. They had to hold me back yeah. from fighting some yeah, bitch in the we, we got we to we yeah. keep it down. So. Yeah, you did. It was a hard <laughs> job. I'm grateful. It's yeah. one thing I want to say about Lakeland. Lakeland will meet you in every level of your dysfunction. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yep. So yep. no matter how low you are, there's a crowd for you in Lakeland. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> very, very diverse in this area. So, And then we go up. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. Again, I want to thank my guest, Nancy Lang, coming in. It was an awesome conversation. Very easy going. 
So if you enjoyed the show, please give us a like. Follow us on Whiskey and Uncensored on either Facebook, Instagram. Twitter is Whiskey Censored, so just give us a follow there as well. This will also be on our YouTube channel, Whiskey and Uncensored. So if you guys like the content, go ahead and follow us there as well. I mean, it doesn't cost you guys anything, right? The more people find us, the more we get to actually make. So hope you guys enjoyed. As always, keep drinking your whiskeys and enjoy your life. And we are out, guys. Cheers.